Hi guys, it's Saturday the 29th as I make this. Hopefully you're watching this on Sunday or um, Monday morning. So I'll leave this posted till about, I think about 10 o'clock. Right. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed this snow day on Saturday. I know I did. I think, I think I cried a little when I first found out that we were off. I know NTI days are actually nice to get, uh, nice to get, but there's something magical about snow days. So uh, I was really happy. All right. One, what I was going to do in class on Friday was I was actually going to give a live lecture on what I'm presenting right now. We're still on structs. And on uh, Wednesday, which would have been Thursday's video, we kind of reviewed something we looked into before, which was uh, arrays of structs. Now, this program deals with something a little bit different. Uh, structs with inside of structs. Right, that's the next step in uh, in learning about uh, in learning about structures. All right, um, this program. The only thing, the only thing I got a little extra in the top is strings because I will be dealing with. Uh, I got the include uh, string uh, dot uh, header file because we're gonna need that because we will have strings inside of the, uh, the structs. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is declare a struct called date. And inside there, I'm just going to have three ints, month, date, and year. So nothing magical there. I think we did that back in the fall when we did structs. I think this was a struct that we did. Uh, the second struct is place. And it's just going to hold, like the comments say here, it's just going to hold a physical address. I've got string for address, a string for city, a string for state, and a string for zip. I could have probably made zip an int, but so many people have that dash and that four letter number at the end of it. You know, you, you always need to think about what could be entered into it. So I made the zip code a string. So we've got date and place. Now let's look at the main struct. We're going to do a struct called employee info. All right. Inside this employee info struct, we're going to have a name. We're going to have an integer employee number. Then we're going to put in two structs. We're going to put in, we're going to use the date struct from here. We're going to declare it as date. There's date, which says we want a structure, a struct date. And we're going to name it birth date. Then we're going to do one, a struct called place, which we made here, except we're going to call this one residence. Now we could type all this stuff in just like um, we're going to type in string name and employer number. But here's the beauty and the uh, reasoning behind structs within a struct. All right, I've got a struct here called, uh, I'm calling it date, All right? And inside here, I am making a date struct and I'm calling it birth date. I could make another date struct and call it hire date. I could make another uh, uh, struct date and I could call it a uh, graduation date. So you can see inside of a big struct, there may be many, many ways you can use it. Same way with place. I'm going to put an address in. Okay, this place I'm calling resident. I could just as easily behind this put place, um, place of business, and then have several. You know what I would end up having here is I could end up having a string name, an int employer number, a couple dates, and a couple places. So, I mean, I could have many, many dates and many places um, as structs inside of my struct. Okay. Another thing I want to point out now, uh, and to be honest with you, um, I haven't tried this in Visual Studio. Um, some programming languages, you have to make, put them in this order. You have to go struct date, struct place, and then the big, the um, big struct last.
because look when i'm when i'm uh putting this birth date in in this residence these two structs already have to exist i'm i gotta be honest with you i'm not 100 visual studio would throw up a flag but i know most of the programming languages i mean uh most of the ides that i've used um throw up a flag if you get to here if you if i would have put this in first it would have always thrown up an error saying these don't exist because when the program starts it actually starts at the top even though our programming languages are modular right um it starts at the top and reads down it would get down to birth date and um seeing that there's no date struck it would throw up a flag even if the date struck was next. So like I said, I'm not 100% sure, but when you all write your code, I would I would say it was good programming language, pro, good programming to write the smaller structs first, then the overall major struct after them uh, so that they exist before you run the big struct. Seems like I said struck about 15,000 times there. All right, so there we go. We got two small structs and we got a big struct with each of the little structs in it. All right, let's run the program because uh, this has some stuff that I want to point out on the way through. Let's walk through it. I'm going to make an employee info, which is the big struct, and I'm going to call it manager. All right, so basically, and this is why you name things like this. It's like I want to get the employee info of a manager. Probably uh, in the business world, the struct would be another struct would be uh, employee info uh, clerk, employee info, info uh, cashier, employee info, um, just about any position in a company that they had so that they'd still have the employee info. But then for each struct, they would name it something different because there may be something new in there. You might not need as much information for um clerk as you do the manager maybe you need more information on the manager than the clerk all right so here i'm going to i'm going to declare an employee info which is basically a, a manager a manager struck i'm going to name it manager all right the first line is something that i've worked with some of you on the program i don't know if i've ever went over it totally in a lecture but this, but this next line, see out, enter the manager's name. All right. If I would uh, see out, enter manager's first name, CN would work fine. But the way I've got this code here is it's going to be, somebody's going to type in a first name and a last name. All right. Um, that's going to have a white space in it. When it's got a white space or some something funky going on with it, you want to use get line. I know we've used that uh, recently, but this works inside of regular programs too. So I'm going to see out get line, CN, which tells it what I want to do, and then manager.name. All right, here's the struct I've called, and I'm calling it manager, manager.name. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is enter the manager's employee number. I'm just going to be uh, I'm just going to be uh, CNing a number, so I can just use CN. I don't need to use get line because there's nothing special about it. I'm just going to CN manager dot employee number. All right. Now I'm going to do the birth date. I'm going to prompt the user for it, and then I'm going to CN manager dot birthday. Now look at this dot birth date dot month all right that means i'm going to be in the, this struct but i'm going to be doing date so i'm going to need two dots here all right i'm going to be into the i'm going to go into the manager struct then the birth date then inside the birth date i'm going to see in the month so i need two dots to get to this You'll get used to dealing with this um, after you did this a few times. It just makes logical sense. You just follow down the progression. The biggest you, you get this one is the bigger struct. This is the littler struct, and this is an item inside the littler struct. This could be as many as five, ten deep. Not that you're going to do that, but I mean there is no limit 
to how long this could be. All right, just like I, I, I did the month, I'm going to do uh, the day and the year. And here's something. I was having a little bit of trouble with this program. And um, this fixes a lot of stuff. If you're having trouble, like it's it's taking in too much stuff or not enough, uh, sometimes don't overthink it. Just put this in. I had an the way I was writing this program. I think it was an extra new line character that, and I wrote that here. Skip the remaining new line character that was making this program clunk. It was a simple program, but it was clunking. I put C and ignore. So this is going to get a new line character, which would be entered into the next thing. Uh, this, this, I, mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this, this next thing I'm going to enter. So the skip the remaining new line character. If you just put C in dot ignore, I know during some of your all's codes, I've told y'all to put it in. And I said, we'll talk about it at some point. Well, this is that point. All right. If you're getting some really strange while you're, you know, while you're, uh, debugging your code and working through it. If you're getting some strange things going on with your entry, always try to throw in the cn.ignore. It's like a fix-all type thing. It's like magic sometimes. You can be having this terrible, terrible time and you put cn.ignore in. It just, uh, it's a nice little, it's a nice little thing, especially when it comes to input and output. All right. Uh, the next thing we're going to get the street address. I use the get line all three times here because a street address, you know, it could be like, um, let's see, the first one's uh, street exists. It could be um, Elm East or something like that. The city could be Bay City. Uh, the state, I probably could have got by with just using a regular CN and zip code. Um, the example I was, when we were talking about this earlier, I said could have had a dash in it that could throw it off. So I'm just going to use um, the get line. It'll get the whole line that I, everything I type in, including white space and special characters, it'll take that in and it will put it inside of manager.residence. So manager, big struct, resident, one of the little structs, dot address which is an item in the little struct. And that's all the way down through here. I'm not going to go over each one. All right. I have my uh, full um, struct with instructs filled. And now I'm just going to see them out. And this part here is just like for a little extra practice. You know, I'm going to see out manager.name. This, this was the big struct. And name was an item just in the big struct. It wasn't in a little struct. All right. Um, then I get down and I'm going to see out basically the items, these three right here. I'm going to see out the three items in one of the little structs, and which was the date. And actually, it was birth date. I should be right, should be a little more proper about this. And uh, this one is the one, all of them that are in the residence of the manager. All right. One thing I want to point out that I just made this one, one instance of a big struct with two little structs in it, but all of this could be an array. I mean, you see how, see that this is going to get to be pretty big, but this could be an array of managers in a big company where you have 85 managers, you could have an array set up for a hundred, right? And do something like this for each manager. All right, let's run this. Into the manager's name, I'll be the manager. Uh, employee number. This actually was my employee number for like a hundred years. Uh, birth date, 12, 26, 19, 61. New manager street. Yeah, I'm definitely not letting you guys know where I live. Uh, let's put the school address on here. 
So you have got two words there. That's uh, get line. We'll take all that in. State Kentucky a zip code four ten. 18. We're just going to make something up here. This is what I'm saying about the extra code. Some people have like that extra four digit code at the end. If I would have left this with just a CN, it would have took the 41018, but wouldn't have took the rest of it. That's why I use the get line. And there I just see out all the information, right? Uh, let's see, I formatted this. I didn't go over too close, but I formatted this where it actually looked like an ad address. But uh, that's how it works. Guys, you can do any, any number of nested um, structs inside of structs, especially when you have something generic like the date or the residence, because you can you know reuse the uh, code over and over again. That's one of the things that I think one of the big parts about this second half of this class is just how making it modular and making it where you can reuse code. You don't have to, every time you sit down to a computer, write code over and over. Lots of cut and paste. You think your way through problems. All right. Um, like I said, again, this video is due by Tuesday or no, Monday at uh, 10 o'clock. All right. I'll have a question on Delta Math as usual. Guys, you have, the, have, the, have a great rest of the weekend. I hope you all make time to watch the football game on Sunday. And I will see you all on Monday.